Welcome to the Faithful Fathering Podcast. Again, this is Rick Wirtz, founder and president of Faithful Fathering, where the mission is to encourage and equip dads to be faithful fathers. That's a dad that prioritizes physical presence, is engaged emotionally, and leads spiritually by example. Uh, this series is still uh, wrapping up Standing in the Gap, Standing Against Anxiety. And uh, today in the, in the studio with us uh, for this uh, last segment in this series is dear friend, uh, Mike Rosas. Mike, welcome. Thanks so much, Rick. Honored to be here. Mike's in ministry and an entrepreneur of, 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 of uh, Discovery Marketing Group, and it's just a blessing to have you here, and your insight is always uh, very powerful. But uh, this segment we're talking about, we, we've talked about prayer. We've talked about, uh, you know, the, the idea of uh, cultural pressures. We talk about uh, the, the, uh, the strongholds, the uh, arguments and pretensions that set themselves up against our kids. And now, you know, all of that, there, there's a, a grounding underneath all that that says, I'm going to be anxious about everything that's going on in this yeah. world, and I, I'm frustrated, I'm uh, you know, just distracted to, to all ends. Uh, how, how do you help your, uh, what are your thoughts on the level of anxiety that we're facing today? Uh, I think it's off the charts. I think we have embraced it rather than identify it. And I think rather than beat it, we have become comfortable with it. And because of that, the church has made a pass on it. Because if I don't judge you on your sin, then you don't judge me on mine. And we never make anxiety or whatever else come to terms with the fact that every knee must bow and every name that's named must bow to the name of Jesus. And so what's happened is there's this very, very, very thin line between the church and the world, and now you can't see who's on what side. Mm. And so when you're seeing the same type of uh, systemic overwhelming inside the church with sickness and disease as you see outside the church, you have to ask the question, something's wrong. Mm course that's why faithful fathering was birthed because mm-hmm. uh, you know, we were called to come beside the church because right. uh, in this is 1995 I received the call he said that the light in my church is uh, you know we mirror society more than we wow. influence society and I thought that was a huge wake-up call that when you look at statistics when it comes to divorce when it comes mm-hmm. to high school dropouts when you come to drugs and alcohol uh, the church too often mirrors society yeah. doesn't it so how, how do we, uh, you know, I, I always think the analogy, uh, they, they always said that, uh, you know, uh, had the Titanic just met the, gone ahead and rammed that iceberg head on, it would have stayed afloat. Wow. But because they tried to avoid it, it ripped the whole side open and the, t- the, the ship went down quickly, right? That is uh, so good. So what, what would your tip be on how, how, to, how can dads, uh, maybe they themselves uh, face their anxiety head, head on. Yeah, and, and I don't want to downplay the fact that we are in anxious times. Um, wars, rumors of wars, uh, nations rising up against nations. One of the day in, in I prayer. Read that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> One day in prayer, the Lord said, uh, rumors of wars is getting more people than the actual wars. And so, yes, we're in a place that has rampant anxiety, but that does not make it legal to live in a place where God told us we didn't have to live. Now, there's no shame in dealing with it um, or fighting against it, but there's also no wisdom in staying in a place where God told us we didn't have to be. Um, I dealt with extreme fear as a child. I couldn't be in a room that was dark without a light on. Um, I would have, always had to have somebody with me uh, in a room. And so what happened was dealing with this you know, fear for whatever traumatic reason. Um, my mom, every night, this was in the 80s, um, she would put a cassette with scriptures of faith being read all night long. Mm. And my mom, in the middle of the night, she would come and she would get the cassette and she would flip it over and she would push play and it would play into the morning. And so you're talking about for months on end, I had the word of God overcoming fear coming into my mind day, I'm sorry, every night, every night as I'm as I'm uh, sleeping. Mm. So what happened was at the age of roughly about uh, 16, I learned this set of scriptures that has by and large helped keep me on the right path. And that's Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Mm-hmm. It says, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let all your requests be known for God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall overtake your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. 
Verse 8 then says, think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, noble, and of a good report. And so what happens is that we have an invitation, God says, not to live in a world without anxiety, but to live without anxiety in the world. And he says, if you do this, if you bring your cares to me, you cast them upon me. If you allow me to partner with you and walk this through with you in prayer, your circumstances may not change, but your ability to withstand those circumstances will. And so what happens is that we're invited to this place to leave anxiety at his feet because at the end of the day, he's the only one that can deal with it anyway. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Excuse me. And so what happens is then he invites us into this place. The Bible says, Romans 12, 2 says, um, it says, let your mind be renewed. Be not conformed Mm -hmm. to the world. Mm -hmm. Don't, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Well, that plays out in verse 8. And what does it talk about? It just talks about thinking thinking on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, noble, and of a good report. And so what, how that plays out is this. We see uh, people that have PTSD that have been in war, that have been in very traumatic situations. What happens when they go with psychologists? Psychologists will bring them back to some of their safest thoughts and memories. They'll watch cartoons. They'll watch things that won't spike up um, insulin levels, that won't spike up fear or anxiety levels. And they have them watching these cartoon things and they begin to slowly deal with the trauma and slowly bring them back to health. Mm -hmm. That is, it has had great success, but it wasn't birthed there, it was birthed in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is our brains have these neural pathways. Mm -hmm. And when we have traumatic situations, they create this um, replay button in our mind where we think about the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so like muscle memory, our mind, when is it when it is at rest, it will go to the deepest neural path. Mm. So how do you heal that place? Number one, there's always a supernatural aspect to it. But number two, you have to create a deeper neural pathway so that when your mind is at rest, it no longer goes to the trauma. Well, how do you do that? By thinking on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, noble, and of a good report. <laughs> if I'm watching the news... I'm creating these neural pathways of anxiety Mm -hmm. because fear sells. Mm -hmm. If I am meditating on God's word, I'm creating these neural pathways of peace so that when my mind is at rest, it's going to go to the strongest memory. If all I'm watching is the news, that's going to be my strongest memory. If I'm meditating on God's word, that's going to be the strongest memory. Right. So in my mind, as I meditate on the word of God, when my mind is at rest, it goes back to my last meditation, which is the word of truth that I was reading that morning. Mm -hmm. And so I live in this place of peace. I don't live in a place of peace, but because I have Christ within me, the hope of glory, I'm able to be established by Holy Spirit to abide in this place of peace in the most unpeaceful places. Right. Right. I heard I heard about an artist who won, um, he won this art award. And, and, and they said they wanted to paint the most peaceful painting they could they could paint. And so some people painted dandelions and some people painted uh, a person on a on a uh, on laying on a on a bed of flowers and somebody on their couch relaxing. The person that won though, they painted this storm. And in the midst of this storm, it was the boat in a safe place. Because peace does not come from circumstances. It Mm -hmm. comes from the place that we're in. Mm -hmm. And you can be in anxious places and not be anxious. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, the Bible says that everything I need is already found in him, in Christ. And so he gives us, right? It it doesn't mean you'll never fight thoughts of anxiety. It means you have a solution for when you do fight those thoughts of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of shalom. You know, you look at... The definition it didn't that everything's going to be lovely and peaceful. Yes. Shalom is actually the the uh, uh, positive state of rightness and well being mm-hmm. in the midst of the battle. Yeah. So that's your uh, your boat in the storm. Yes. The storm is that, and that also goes back to where we talked about you know, Christ taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Is that that verse eight of Philippians mm-hmm. as well? That those are the things we're to meditate on. But uh, so so as we move forward with that, that uh, the the peace and the the comfort that is our personal passionate relationship with Christ and navigating through this with that that uh, that anxiety uh, you know, just completely put in check being 
navigating through anxiety at a personal level and uh, and putting push, pushing it aside in in uh, in the world. How how do we uh, move forward with that Thanksgiving piece then? As we you know we're, uh, uh, we're we're to be thankful for everything that we incur because it's conditioning us for what he has uh, around the corner for us, right? So maybe some of that anxiety is meant to condition us so that we're ready for the the next blow that we might take. Is that does that make sense? Well, yeah, I think Thanksgiving gives us the right context, mm-hmm. and so because they say hindsight is twenty twenty, so I can look at even the bad things and see. How how they grew me. I can look at the good things and right. see how it was a season of harvest. Mm-hmm. And so regardless of what the situation is, when I put myself and saying, okay, God, in your uh, omniscience, you thought it was wise that this, that I would be found in this space in the situation to go through this trial. I, I praise you for it because I know, number one, you work all things for my good. And so I'm walking into a place better prepared because I've submitted to you. And the Bible says that when we submit ourselves to God, God is the one who raises us up. Mm-hmm. And so it allows me to find peace even in troubled times because I know he's in control. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean I find joy in troubled times, but it does mean that I find peace knowing, God, you're up to something. I don't get it. So sometimes the best I can do is just hang on for the ride. Right. And that I think yeah, I'm thinking of the dad out there that uh, maybe didn't know his dad and he he blames his dad not mm-hmm. showing up. And that's why he's so anxious and uh, frustrated about everything going on around him. So he, there's a time where you you try to blame those uh, blame your circumstances, blame somebody. Uh, and that doesn't last very long. You can't no, do that and, yeah. and, be, and stay alive, really. But so then you you start to overcome it, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and sometimes the the culture will actually uh, reward an overcomer. Hey, mm-hmm. he's really grabbed himself by his bootstraps, picked <laughs> himself up, got after it, and he's doing well. But at the end of the day, that anxiety is still percolating in there, yeah. right? So it isn't until we learn to submit to Christ that we really keep the anxiety in check and move forward with all the boldness and confidence that is our relationship with Christ. So as we as we uh, move into this time of uh, Thanksgiving, or maybe uh, as this is being played, it'll be a Thanksgiving a, a day late, but uh, how do you, what are some Thanksgiving traditions that you've kind of uh, built in your home that uh, is really all about uh, keeping this anxiety at bay? You know, um, I, I tell my, my children, me and my wife, we say uh, nobody owes us anything. So we don't have these expectations that are false or letdowns. Um, so if you're not owed anything, you instantly become thankful for everything because mm-hmm. nobody had to give you anything. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we thank God. My wife came from Mexico. My family came from Colombia. Um, we teach our children about the opportunities we've received in America. And uh, we, we, we consider, you know, we have an orphanage in South, in, uh, in just south of Colombia. Um, we teach our children, say, hey, there's children that are celebrating. They're in our home. Uh, but they don't have parents. They're celebrating, but they don't have siblings. They don't have hope but God. And so we're reminded that if it weren't for God, we would be going to hell head first. And so it's these things that teach us Thanksgiving. And so we try to teach our children Thanksgiving is not a day, but it's a lifestyle. Mm. And so God allows us to do this. And so what we try to do is we try to practice a Sabbath, a weekly um, Thanksgiving. And so we'll have a nice meal. And we'll go through this Thanksgiving thing 52 times a year because we want our children to understand God has been supremely good to us. Uh, We deserve nothing, and yet he lavishly gave us his son. And so it keeps you in this place of Thanksgiving so that even when you go through bad times, you're like, yeah, but I didn't deserve the good times. (laughs) So um, so it's about teaching our children not to be entitled and not to expect things um, from, say, you know, a government or something else. To provide for us for it is God out of his goodness that provides for us and even though he loves us we don't deserve him out of the goodness and out of the unique giftedness <clears throat> that each of us have to yeah. uh, generate and take care of our family as well so mm-hmm. that's by God's grace and certainly for his glory so the Thanksgiving mindset is absolutely foundational what a Christian is all about right mm-hmm. so that's what you're uh, teaching your kids what uh, what tips uh, final tips do you have for dads uh, for this Thanksgiving? Uh, how how can uh, I I'd like the tip right there that uh, have Thanksgiving once a week <laughs> instead of once a year, right? Yeah. So what, a, what a concept that was. Besides, besides turkey's healthier for you. Than anything <laughs> yes. <else> anyway. <laughs> I do love turkey, <laughs> but I, I I think I think it's an aspect that fathers really need to fight anxiety head on. 
because the world is trying to push it down the throats of your children. Not just saying that it's something that's normal, but it's almost like this badge of bravery now that you're dealing with anxiety. And so we want them to understand that the normal space of a Christian is not to deal with anxiety. We might be tempted with it. <coughs> Excuse me. But if God invites us to not be anxious, it's because he's given us the opportunity to live that way. And what is the relationship you would have? Uh, I'm thinking of, of dads wanting control. And, and we're today one of the uh, uh, ideas out there is that we can be in control of everything, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's creating anxiety itself. Yes. Right? <laughs> we, we can't. I, I think we have very little control. Um, what brings me control is knowing that I have no control because I put it in God's hands. Yes. And so the reality is that there's very little. If you work at a job, you could be downsized tomorrow. Um, there's so many factors that play into life that if you think about it, you could go crazy. And mm -hmm. I believe that would bring anxiety, induce it in an instant. And so for me, uh, I book in my days with God. In my prayer times, I put everything in his hands and I ask him to help my day. And at the end of the day, I thank him for sustaining me and carrying me. Because um, honestly, I know how very little I actually have control over. Hmm. Well, you want to close out giving that uh, Philippians 6 through 8 again? Is that uh, yeah. you to go ahead? Yes. Um, and this is a verse I would challenge you to learn as a family because there's such power in it. And it says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let all your requests be known before God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will overtake your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, noble, and of a good report. And those are the things that keep us healthy and in right mind. Amen. And that's uh, Dad's Peace is a translation of Shalom, which, again, is that positive state of rightness and well-being in the midst of the battles and the things that we're facing, the anxiety that's trying to percolate up. Take control. Take it captive to the obedience of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, thank you for your time. And Dad's, uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing and uh, make those adjustments that need to be made. Have a blessed uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, let's uh, continue to... Uh, take a leg up in this world by raising your family under the Word of God. That's the dad you're called to be, and that's the dad the next generation needs. Thanks again, Mike. God Thanks bless you.